All right, we are talking about horse breeds uh, for this week. So get your name of the breed on the left-hand side and the description of the breed on the right, along with some notable characteristics. I will tell you that the horses are one of the hardest breeds to distinguish, uh, given just the complexity of color patterns and their body shape. So uh, definitely you want to make sure you're picking note of any of those key characteristics. We've got um, a link here that hopefully will help, uh, gives you some tips and tricks for how to distinguish those horse breeds, uh, one of which is gait, which is hard to tell by a picture, but we can look at the way that it stands, um, markings, and the coloring on those horses. And then there is an um, article from National Geographic for you on uh, the domestication of the horse, because horses have been around for a very very long time. So let's start to take a look at those breeds. The first we're going to look at is an Appaloosa. Right? So that first breed is an Appaloosa. Uh, their height is 14.2 to 16 hands. Uh, so we do measure horses and hands. Um, it is that old technique. Uh, and we go from the bottom so from the ground where their hoof hits all the way to the top of their withers. So the same thing as far as looking at um, to their shoulders, right, to where their withers are. And we measure them in hands, and they are still measured in hands today. Uh, the appearance of the Appaloosa is a mottled skin. Uh, they have striped hooves. They have a white sclera uh, or white around the eyes that is noticeable. They are used for gaming events, horse shows, and trail rides. So here is our Appaloosa. Um, so if I were able to look at the hooves, we'd see some striping there. And then um, there is the white around its eye right on in there. Next, we have an Arabian. Uh, Arabians are going to be those horses that you think of when you are riding uh, for races and competitions. So they're 14 to 15.3 hands. Appearance, they are fairly giant, wide set eyes on a broad forehead, um, small curved ears, and a large and efficient nostrils, right, because they are distance runners. Um, they are used for long distance sports endurance. Uh, so those are the Arabians. Here we have that beautiful stance. Um, so you can see those tall legs um, that are definitely built for speed. Next, we have a Belgian. Your Belgian are 16 to 18 hands high. They have a sorrel color, uh, usually with a white mane and tail, uh, white face markings, and four white socks or stockings. Um, these are used for hobby and historical farming. We can also use them for forestry work and carriage pulling. So here is our Belgian. It is a type of what we would call a draft horse. Right. So we have that very large stance, um, the notable fur or feathering behind its hoofs, um, and then that very muscular tone right, to be able to assist in pulling those objects. Next, we have a Clydesdale. This is another draft horse. Um, and so Clydesdales are, again, very large horses, 16 to 18 hands. Uh, they can be very flashy. Uh, so these are, we think about um, the feathering behind the legs. Uh, we can do some pretty things with their mane. They are high-stepping horses uh, with very strong, large feet. And again, uses are going to be for having historical farming, also for carriage pulling. Uh, so here's our Clydesdale. All right, so again, huge hooves. Um, this coat is a bit different than the than the one prior. Um, it could just be that winter coat aspect of things, but you want to pay attention to that large head um, and then those hooves. Next is a Morgan. Uh, Morgan are 14 to 15 hands high. They have an arched neck, a very high stepper. Uh, their uses are competitive trail riding and driving, also Western and English disciplines. So here we have that very high arch step. Um, that So you can see those back legs stretch very far back. Um, that's going to be that key notable thing to look for in these horses. 
<laughs> Next, we have our paint. Um, so we want to be careful with our paint that we don't get confused with the coloring uh, because there are some, uh, there's the coloring of a horse is called paint, but then there's also a painted horse. Uh, so it's 14.2 to 16.2 hands high. Appearance, we've got a combination of white and any other color, three coat patterns, okay? So you have Overo, Tobiano, Tovero. Those are the three different coat patterns, but it's going to be any combination of white. Uh, they're used as stock horse, western events, um, and variety of just riding disciplines. So just kind of a good hardy horse. So here we have a paint. Um, we have a nice uh, kind of figure right here where we've got that strength in the hawks, um, the withers as well. So here's this nice high neck. Um, not as long of a uh, neck as some of the horses that we're going to be seeing. Um, more similar to that Clydesdale and that Belgian, right? Where it's that shorter kind of neck, is, the head is close to the body. Um, and then we have those very sleek legs. All right, then we have the Percheon or Percheron. Um, it's 16, 18 hands high. Uh, they're born black and they turn gray and they are used for riding. So here we have a Percheon. Again, it's gonna be in that draft family. Uh, we can tell that with the stockiness of it. Um, so they've got very thick legs uh, where all that muscling is. And then we have a very um, short distance, right, between that head and the torso. Next, we have our quarter horse. A lot of you guys have seen quarter horses, and you'll recognize these. Um, they're 14 to 16 hands high. Uh, there's 16 recognized colors of a quarter horse, and they're used for racing. Um, oftentimes, these are going to be horses that you are going to see in the TV at shows as well. Um, so here's our quarter horse. You can see this one has a lot of great muscling to it because it is used for racing. Uh, so we have that well-established muscle group so we can get that endurance running happening. Um, we have a fairly nice girth to the neck um, farther away but um, more of a tapering off right before it goes into the head versus those draft horses. Next, we have a saddlebred. So saddlebred are 15 to 17 hands high. Uh, their hooves hit the ground individually. Uh, they're very elegant in appearance, so bright facial features. And they're used for saddle seat driving and as show horses. Uh, so saddlebred. So here we have um, that nice dip in that back where we're going to be resting that saddle on and a little bit of a wider stance right here. A nice sleek slender neck, um, very muscular sternum area. Then we have our standard bred horse. Uh, they're about 15 hands high. Parents are solid colors. Uh, limbs and hocks are going to be very strong or muscular. Uh, they can withstand that constant pounding uh, that trotting and pacing require. Uh, they're used for harness racing, pleasure driving, and saddle riding. Uh, so here is just a nice overall kind of horse, right? Um, so that saddle bred, we've got that nice girth around the waist um, and into the chest. Neck is not too large, not too small, um, and fairly wider um, foot stance uh, and a little bit girthier legs than we just saw in the others. Next is our Tennessee walking horse. So Tennessee walking horse is going to do just that. It is made for walking and leisure riding. Uh, they're 15 to 16 hands high. Uh, they can be black, bay, chestnut, sorrel, and white. Uh, they're going to have a smooth center, arched hind limbs. Uh, so here we go is our Tennessee walker. Uh, so think about these horses as just that stance is going to be very spread apart um, and very wide very wide stance for them in between that, that fore and hind limb. Last, we have our thoroughbred. 
Our thoroughbred can be anywhere from 15 to 17 hands high. They come in all solid colors. Then we have long neck and very powerful haunches. They're used for racing, hunting, and jumping. So here we have a little bit more of a height back there to those haunches. And then we've got um, our nice muscling throughout. Uh, so we have that as our quarter horse.